Hello guys, how's everyone doing? Welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to learn about welds in Roblox. In Roblox, you use welds to glue the parts together. For example, uh, I have two parts here, right? The yellow brick, this is part A and this is part B. If I just put part B against part A, right now in Studio, they, they are attached, but as soon as I press play, they're going to fall apart. So in order to glue the parts together, uh, one way to do it is to use welds by joint surfaces. So I'm gonna check this box here, joint surfaces. And once that box is checked, if now I go and I click on a part, I press it against another part. You're gonna see there's a white outline. That means that these two parts have been welded together. And now if you look over the, the Explorer window, so again, this is part C and this is part D. You're gonna see that part D has something in it. If you open, if you expand part D, you're gonna see there's a weld there, right? And click on the weld, you're gonna see that part zero is part D and part one is part C. So here part D has been welded to part C. These two parts are now welded together. And if I press play now, these two parts are going to stay together. They're not going to fall apart. This welding technique, joint surfaces, only going to work for flat surfaces. So say if I have a round surface, the wall here, if I try to do the same thing with the wall and this brick, it's not going to work. You can see that the outline is red, it means it's not going to work. So in order for me to weld this wall to this brick, I would need to go to the ball or go to the brick, either one. So let, let me go to the brick. So my brick here is part E. I'm going to add a well constraint to it. And now I'm going to click on the well constraint and I'm going to select my part. So same as the well in part D, there's going to be a part zero and part one. So I'm going to go to part zero. I'm going to click on the empty space in part zero. And now I get to select which one is part zero. So I'm gonna select my part E here for part zero. And I'm gonna click on the blank space for part one. And I'm gonna select the other one, which is part F, this one. All right, so now my part E, which is this, this part right here, is welded to part F, which is this one right here. So now these two are welded together. If I play right now, these two bricks are going to fall apart because they have not been welded together. These two have been welded together by joint surfaces, and these two have been welded together by the weld constraint. Let's play and take a look. All right, and you can see that the yellow bricks have fell apart. On the other hand, the green bricks here are staying together, and the uh, pink, the, the ball and the brick here are staying together. You, you see that they, they are attached. There's no way to separate them. So those are two ways of welding your parts together. The first way is to use joint surfaces and that applies to flat surfaces only. And the second way is to add a weld constraint and you just have to define part zero and part one to weld the two parts together. And keep in mind that all my examples here have only two pieces, two parts, but in case you have multiple parts, you can just repeat the process to weld all the parts together. Let's now click on the Model tab. Inside the Model tab, you should see a section called Constraints. Um, the first button here is the Create button. We're going to come back to that. The second button, just uh, click on the second bu button, the Draw on top, and click on the third button, which, which is the Show Welds. Immediately after you click on those two buttons, you, you see a well constraint here. So this one is going to show the well constraints, but it's not going to show the welds that are created from joint surfaces. In fact, let's go to our part D and I'm going to delete my weld from the joint surfaces. All right, so part C and part D 
are now not welded together. All, all these parts are not welded together. That's why you don't see anything. The only two parts that are still welded together is the ball and this one. You can see the well constraint here. All right, so now if you uncheck these two boxes, if you uncheck the draw on top, you're not gonna see the, the, the well constraint. The reason is it's drawing inside the part. So if to see the well constraint, you can still see it. If you select the part and you move it up, and there it is. You can see a little line here. If you want to make the line thicker, you can come here and change the, the, uh, the setting here. So right now it's 1x. If I make it 1.5, 2, 2.53 or even let, let me make it 6 hit enter and you can see a thick well constraint now right but if I move it back down you're still not gonna see it because it's inside the part so again in order to see the well constraint here you need to draw on top so it's drawing on the surface of the part on top of the part then you can see it on the other hand if you click you uncheck this box show welds then you're not gonna see it so let me now click on show welds to see the welds again and let me change this back it's too thick it's kind of annoying so I'm gonna change it to 2 okay that so that's better what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete this well constraint so now all our parts are not nothing is welded to anything right next we're gonna take a look at another way of welding our parts together and that is to use this crate button here. So if you hover over the crate button, you can see there's a little arrow that's gonna give you the drop down menu. And these are all the different kinds of uh, constraints that you can use. One of them is the well constraint. So just select well. So now this button here is gonna give you the well constraint. So now I can select the two parts I wanna weld together. For example, if I want to weld these two parts together, part uh, A and B, I'm going to click on part A or part B. Either one is fine. Once I click on it, you can see that uh, it has like a red line. I don't know if you can see that. But I can select another part to weld this part to. Right now, I'm just going to select this part B. So now these two parts are welded together and you can see that there is a weld constraint there. Select the weld constraint go to the uh, properties window you can see that uh, part 0 is part A and part 1 is part B so the way this button works is if you click on it and nothing is selected then it gives you the option to select part 0 and part 1 now say if I have selected one part already before I click on it so now part C is selected and I click on it then it's only gonna give me one option to select the next part to weld this part to another part so i'm gonna select part d here and now these two parts are welded together and now in this next example what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna duplicate this part so i'm gonna do a control d and i'll rename this part to let's see we have e f i'm gonna say g right and I'll move part G up here all the way up or maybe I'll, I'll let it stick out just a little bit so it's halfway inside the ball and halfway sticking out all right so now if I want to weld all my parts together here I have three different parts and it really doesn't matter you can have like 10 100 different parts you can select them all before you click the create button so now I, I selected all three parts here let me try that again. I'm going to select all three parts. Okay, so now I have all three parts selected. I'm going to click on the weld button. And you can see all three parts has been welded together. And if you check the explorer, you're going to see that part E has a weld constraint. And part E here is welded to part F. Part F here is the middle, is the ball, has a weld constraint. And part F is welded to part G and which one is part G let me click on it it's the top here so part E is the bottom here is welded to part F and part F is welded to part G right and it's all done automatically as long as you have selected all the parts and you click the weld button up here
Right, so now all our parts are welded. You can see there's a line in between each part here. Th these two are welded together, these two are welded together, and these three are welded together. Let's now play and take a look. They all should stay together now. Except for these, we haven't done those yet, but look at over here. These parts are together. I cannot move them anymore. Oh, there, there it goes. See, and it's still together. These two are together and these two are together. And the final thing we're going to do today is we're going to look at how we script a moving welded part. So here I have these three bricks here, right? And uh, first thing I want to do is I want to weld them together. So I'm going to again go up here and select weld. And I'm going to click on my first part. I'm going to weld it to the second part. I'm going to click on the weld again and I'm going to select my second part I'm gonna weld it to my third part and again I could have selected all three and click the, the the weld button to have them all welded together anyway so um, so here you can see my part one has a weld constraint and it is welded to part two and my part two has a weld constraint it is welded to part three very important click on the home menu tab and click on part one you can see that part one is anchored part two and part three are not anchored so only part one is anchored all right so now let's go to the script we're going to go to the service script service we're going to look at our script so inside our script we're declaring part one and then we're going to wait for 10 seconds we have an infinite while loop here and all this loop is going to do is going to change the position of part one it's going to add one to the y position so it's going to move the part up by one every one second let's play and take a look so there are the three parts right and we're going to give it 10 seconds and we should see part one moving up and there it goes so part one is moving up and remember these three parts are welded together but only part one is moving up the other two parts are not moving and that's because we're moving part one by changing the position of part one so changing the position of a welded part is not going to affect the other two parts it's not going to move the other two parts in order to move all the parts together you would have to change the C frame of a part. So instead of part one dot position, we're gonna do part one dot C frame. And we're we're doing the same thing. We're adding a vector three to the C frame, and each time we're moving up by one. Let's play again. Take a look. All right, and give it about ten seconds. We should see all three parts moving up there it goes and one more thing I want to add here is even though when we move the position let me just copy this first and I'm gonna paste it outside the, the infinite while loop here so I'm gonna change this position back to position right and yeah we're gonna add a vector 3 to it and this time I'm gonna add maybe uh, three to it so first we're going to change the position of part one so remember changing the position of part one is only going to move part one part two and part three are not going to be affected but the um, the well constraint is still in effect so, so these three parts part one part two and part three they are still being held together by the well constraint so once I get past this line, um, it goes into this uh, infinite while loop, right? And it's going to start to move part one after that. And you're going to see that it's going to move all three parts together uh, uh, as part one move up by one. All the, uh, the other two parts are going to move up by one as well. Let's take a look. Initially, only part one is going to move up, and then they're all going to move up together. See, part one move up. And you see that? So now as part one is moving up, the well constraint is still in place and it's moving all the parts up.
All right, so that's how you use welds in Roblox. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon.